You know, getting back to London from any other world capital is like moving from storm to calm. The officials are polite and efficient, and the people, in typical British fashion, are mannerly, quiet, and orderly. In fact, no one ever intrudes on your privacy. It's him! Got another one! Hold the Templar! Well, thank you. Now, would someone like to tell me what this is all about? Oh, don't you know? It was in this morning's paper. What? Listen, Byron Uflitz, the prominent film producer, plans to make a picture based on the true life story of the famous Simon Templer. <laughs> Conference. Have you an appointment? I don't need one. The legalities are your problem. I know, Vernon, but we're on shaky ground and I... Ufalitz? It's him. Mr. Templer, I'm delighted to meet you. I'm not sure it's mutual. Ah, yeah, you mean about the newspaper story? Exactly. Uh, this is Mr. David Brown. He's my attorney. You may need him, Mr. Brown. A pleasure. Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down. Mr. Templer, on my word of honor, I'm just as uh, annoyed about this premature press release as you are. You know reporters, anything but a story. I apologize from the bottom of my heart. All right. Mr. Templer, I have some wonderful plans. But first, a big personal publicity campaign. Oh, we realize that you're a celebrity now. The publicity never hurt anybody. Exactly, and I have the best press agent in London. Mr. Ufalitz, you're jumping the gun. We have a great deal to talk about. Uh, Mr. Templer, I've had this idea for quite some time. It was originally called uh, Salute to Adventure. I, I planned to make it with Alan Flain. He's a fine actor. Yeah, he's nothing. Many people have made pictures about modern heroes, but this one will be real. You playing yourself in the Simon Templar story. The composite of your real life adventures. David here has uh, drawn up a contract. You look it over? Contract? Well, if this is a contract, how long is the script? <laughs> The important clause is £1,000 a week, plus 5% of gross. Very generous terms. Well, gentlemen, I... Uh, I may fool you and read this. We'll make any concessions you want, of course. Uh, what about the script? I got two marvelous writers. Vic Lazaroff, Bob Kendricks. I'll have the first draft out this week. Well, I presume I have script approval. Oh, completely. Well, Peggy, this is Mr. Simon Templer, my secretary, Miss Warden. Hello. We've met. Take them over, introduce them to Vic and Bob. Certainly. Come back when you've talked to them. I have some plans for the night. And don't worry, this picture will make history. And money. I'll see you later. Byron, I've got to hand it to you. I didn't think it would work. It always works. I know Templer's type. He's an egomaniac. An ounce of picture based on his life. He beats a path to my door. You probably never have got to him otherwise. What's more, he thinks I'm charming. Oh, congratulations. Mr. Tintley, what did you mean by telling him that we'd make any concession he wants? You know exactly what I meant. We give him nothing and make it retroactive. How long have you been in this crazy business? About six months. Oh, before that? In an office in Brisbane. Your home, Australia? Mm. I came to London to seek my fame and fortune. <laughs> and you ended up with Byron Ufalitz. Mm. What do you think of him? Well, I think he's charming. Really? I also think he's a fraud, a cheat, and a congenital liar. Do you agree? I'm his secretary, remember? In here, second floor, room 83. What are the names again? 
Vic Lazaroff and Bob Kendricks. Watch them. Why? They're professional jokers. Itching powder, exploding cigars, a lot. Do you say professional or amateur? I think you can look after yourself, Mr. Templer. This is diabolically bad. No understatement, please. Who wrote this drivel? We did. Well, oh. Bob, isn't there some way we could get out of this? We're under contract, remember? Ufferlitz owns us, body and soul. Maybe we could break into his house late at night and cut his trousers off at the knees. <laughs> <laughs> or his head off at the neck. <laughs> it's him, in person. But no machine gun. And no halo. I'm making an inventory of this circus, and I see I finally arrived at the monkey house. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. I'm Vic Lazaroff. Mr. Lazaroff. This is my fellow inmate, Bob Kendricks. Hi. Bob, nice meeting you. How's the epic going? Well, the story of your life, fair. Uh, we got problems. Oh. Such as? Mostly Ufferlitz. Incidentally, is that his real name? It's on his police record. Has he had trouble? Mostly women. Ufferlitz is the way science is checked, and the banks honor them. And of that, he's no more ignorant than a lot of film producers without a police record. Have you boys got the next ten pages ready? Thanks. This is the genius of directing your epic. Jack Groom, Simon Templer. Mr. Groom? Uh-huh. How tall are you? Six two. Uh-huh. Can you grow a moustache in ten days? Why, is there a market for them? Oh, you should have a moustache. Your hair should be all slicked down. You don't look like the saint. But, but I am the saint. What difference does that make? I can say we're going to be great friends. Well, that isn't necessary. I don't suppose Ufferlitz has had the common courtesy to tell Orlan Flane he's no longer in this picture. I have no idea. Flane is absolutely going to blow his top. Byron, I'm begging you. Don't. It's embarrassing. But I need this picture. I'm broke. Then you've been very foolish with your money. Maybe. Maybe. But the fact is, I counted on this. And you promised me. I changed my mind. You can't do this to me. I've done it. Templars accepted the deal. Then I'll sue! Don't be stupid. Look, there's such a thing as a verbal contract, you know. And I've got plenty of witnesses. Are you threatening me? Are you? All right. All I want is... I don't care what you want. You give me trouble, you'll be sorry. All I want is a fair deal. Let us get our relative position straight. I remember when you were a talent scout for a somewhat less glamorous business in Rome. There was a girl who died rather suddenly. Now look, if you want to play dirty, that's all right with me. I can remember as far back as you can, Byron. I've got a few things on you too, and believe me, when I fix you, you'll stay fixed for good! Oh, I'm sorry, I'll come back later. No, no, Simon! Come in, come in! I'm through with my present business. It's flame, isn't it? Forget him, I have. Well, I don't like the thought of doing anybody out of a job. Nonsense! I made a date for you tonight. It's purely for publicity purposes. I've arranged for a photographer. You are, uh, you're dining at the Chateau Marmont with April Quest. Who? I want the gossip columnist to pick it up, the big romance story of the year, you know. Now, Mr. Oofel, its cooperation goes just so far. Oh, she's not only beautiful, she can read and write. Here she is. Simon, I want you to cooperate. What time? Come in. Hello, Mr. Templer. Oh. Hello. I thought I'd never be ready. The studio sent over four dresses and I had to try them all. You nearly missed. Would you like a drink? Oh, let me. Uh, martini? Yes, but dry. Of course. Lousy way to meet, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Know anything about me? Well, yes, let's see. Your, your name is April Quest. On my birth certificate, it's Agnes Quist. <laughs> what else? Oh, you, uh, you were raised outside Edinburgh. Your father's a Scottish laird. Oh, and you could play the bagpipes before you could even walk. No. Well, I was born in Scotland, all right. But my father wasn't a Scottish laird. Let's at least start off honest. Oh. Now, before we haul ourselves off to the Chateau Marmont, tell me about you. All right. To us. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks, George. You're welcome, Mr. Flynn. You know what else Ufflet said to me? He said I was flabby. 
That's ridiculous, Mr. Flynn. You look great. Washed up, George. Finished. Don't say that. The way men like us, let's get important in this business. Dirty, crooked. Look where he is. George, so help me, I'll get even with him. Sure, Mr. Flynn. Excuse me. Good evening, Sam. What would you like? Good evening. I think a couple of dry martinis. Mm -hmm. Hold it, Miss Quest. That's well, thanks. Byron's arranged all sorts of little surprises. Oh, such as? Uh-oh, Simon. Here comes trouble. Well, our little bird certainly is in fine feathers tonight. Careful, darling, or this little bird will peck your eyes out. You know, you haven't seen anything yet, Templar. Wait till she brings out the glued-on lashes. Watch it, Flame. Well, April certainly does glitter, doesn't she? Do you like cheap clock? And since the old contract is now expired, a matter of a guarantee is up for negotiation. I suggest that we meet for an exploratory discussion. Yours sincerely. See you that easily. Hello, Peggy. Hello, Mr. Groom. How is he? Mm. Uh, Peggy, what do you think he'd say if, um... No, no, it doesn't matter. Well, what is it? No, nothing, nothing. But... Oh, Byron, sorry to interrupt. I'd like to talk to you. No, we're just finished. Oh, Peggy, you can type those things first thing tomorrow morning. I won't be at the studio until 11. Yes, sir. And thanks for working late. I take a taxi home on the company. Thank you. Good night. Good night, and Good night. Now, what's your problem, Jack? I've, um, I've just had dinner with the president of Liberty Productions. Oh, Sid Mayo. How is he? Oh, he's fine. Fine. They, um, they want me to direct just tomorrow. It's a million pound budget. Biggest picture they've ever made. But uh, you're under contract to me. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. But I just thought maybe you'd um, let me buy myself out. Any price within reason. Jack, I, I hate to stand in the man's way, but I, I just can't do without you. That's nonsense, Byron, and you know it. You're too modest. Byron, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. You said that when... Uh, I offered you your present contract two years ago. Oh, yes, I know, but things change. Contracts don't. I just can't turn this down. I'm afraid you'll have to. Oh, please. This means everything to me. I'm sorry. Byron, do you sleep well? Why shouldn't I? I just thought your conscience might keep you awake. It doesn't. But it should. You use people, Byron, ruthlessly. And when you finish with him, you'll throw him on the rubbish heap. Now, Alden Flane's a good example. Do you realize what you've done to him? He's a broken man. He's a fool. But he's human. He's made money for you. He's done his best for you. Alden Flane is a washed-up has-been. I couldn't care less. Do you care that there isn't a single person on this unit that doesn't hate you? Not a bit. I'm paying for work, not affection. And right now, I'm too busy for election ethics. You signed a contract with me, which you were darn glad to get at the time. Now you want out just because there's greener grass in another field. Well, that's just too bad. Byron, please. For the last time. Let me buy myself out. In a word... No. And it looks as if I'll have to put the pressure on, doesn't it? I was hoping not to have to do this. Do what? Remember Trilby Andrews? Dumb little broad. Don't you think the papers might like to know the full story? Are you trying to blackmail me? In a word, yes. I never let myself be pushed around. It's a matter of principle. I blow the whole works, my career, my life a lot. Before I'd knuckle under that kind of pressure. So all I want from you, Mr. Groom, is the answer to a very simple question. 
Do you want to live? Or do you want to die? Mr. Templer, this just came for you. Oh, thank you. A cabbie delivered it just a moment ago. Thanks. What is it? Some Byron Ooflets. He wants to see me at once. But it's half past ten. Well, he says it's urgent. Can't you come in for one drink? Well, Byron wants me. So do I. Well, it may be important. Can I have a rain check? For how long? I'll be back in an hour. I'll wait. Dead since seven thirty. Oh, no, I left at nine. When Jack Groom got here. Groom was here tonight. Yes, Byron told me to take a taxi home. When I got home, I, I realized I'd forgotten my dictation book. Oh, is it still here? Yes. Is this it? Well, go on. Go on. And the, the door was open. And then I saw him. What time was this? Just now, when I, when I heard your car pull up. Oh, Simon, I'm so frightened. Have you touched anything? No. For a moment, I thought I was going to faint. Home. 
Sergeant, come here, quick! Hey, a bloke's been shot! Did we run with nothing to hide? Couldn't we have stayed? Hey, whoever shot Ufalitz went to a lot of trouble to see that I'd get the blame. Come to my house, urgent. But this isn't Byron's writing. I know. You recognize it? No. It was very neatly planned. The police arriving seconds after I did. Peggy, did you notice the photograph on his desk? No, I, I, I was too frightened. I was signed Trollby something or other. Mean anything? It was Groom's manner when he arrived? Was he relaxed, natural? Yes, I think so. Peggy, listen. The police will see your name on the calendar pad on his desk. They'll know you had an appointment with him tonight. They'll be around to your flat within an hour. Tell them the truth, but don't tell them you went back, understand? But that's a lie. Don't tell them. All right, if you say so. And don't say anything about me. You haven't seen me all evening. I don't want any police interference. Yes. Well, the bullet went through the cerebral cortex yes. and emerged just under the septal region. The address? How about the dam? Might say sometime between 10 and 11. Thanks. Inspector? The girl's name's Peggy Warden. She's a secretary. I've got the address. Men's? Sir? Have her picked up for questioning. Yes, sir. So somebody finally killed him. Thanks. I gather you're not very upset. Upset? It's the best news I've had in years. Did you hate him? Along with thousands of others. Why? He was brutal. He hurt people. Including you? Look, Simon, I don't want to talk about it. April, have you ever heard of a girl named Trilby something or other? Trilby Andrews. You know her? No. I met her once or twice. She's an actress. Bit parts. I haven't seen her around for months. Why? The photograph was on Byron's desk. Do you know who that girl is, Miss Wooden? No, I don't. Apart from Mr. Groom, did Mr. Ufflitz have any other callers while you were here? No. No phone calls? No. Oh, he did telephone the Chateau Marmont. About what? He wanted to arrange some publicity photographs. Of whom? You may have read in the paper that Mr. Ufflitz was making a film based on the life of Simon Templer. Oh, yes. Mr. Templer and April Quest were dining at the restaurant. Mr. Ufflitz wanted a photograph of them together. Did Mr. Ufflitz have any enemies that you know? I only knew him in business hours. I knew very little about his private life. Is Mr. Groom, sir. That'll be all, Miss Warden. One of my men will drive you home. Thank you. Thank you. What's all this about? I'll answer that, Mr. Groom. My name is Teal, Chief Inspector Teal. I wanted to ask you a few questions. Well, what about? Baron Ufflitz. He's dead. Could Jack Groom have written that note? No. No motive. And we can eliminate Kendricks and Lazaroff. I hardly knew them. So who do we have left? Who do we have that hated Ufalitz enough to kill him? And hated me enough to see me take the rap? Orland Flain. Right. Ufalitz blasted him out of a job, and then hired me in his place. And tonight you hit him? And he knew where I was. Oh, Simon, look, I know Orland's a bit mixed up, but I can't right, believe it. We'll try this for size. Flain leaves the shadow of Marmont, he goes to Ufalitz's house and kills him. Then he gets the cab driver to bring me this note. And then calls the police. Well, what do you think? Oh, Simon, I just don't know. Yes, we quarreled. I've admitted that. Quarreled violently? Yes, violently, but I didn't kill him. This quarrel was entirely verbal? Yes. Nothing physical? No. What was it about? It was about my contract. I'm waiting, Mr. Graham. Liberty Productions wanted me to direct their next picture for them. I was under contract to Byron. I wanted to buy myself out. And this new contract involved more money? Yes. How much more money? A lot. Mr. Groom, I want details. Byron paid me 5,000 a picture. Liberty were offering me 12,000. A large increase. Yes. And just what is the status of your contract now Mr. Ufflitz is dead? I don't know. Was it a personal contract? I don't know. I'd have to consult my lawyers about that. 
you might have to consult your lawyers about several things. Listen, Inspector, I did not kill Baronofelitz. And the cab driver will tell you he was alive when I left. Mr. Groom, believe me, we'll investigate your alibi carefully. But I'm afraid in the meantime, we'll have to hold you for further questioning. If you find this cab driver, he'll swear that. Oh, we'll find the man, don't worry. Look, Inspector, a lot of people hated Baronofelitz. Why don't you talk to them? I intend to. Burns, take him down to the station. Yes, sir. This way, please, sir. What do you think? Hard to say, sir. This April Quest, you've got an address from Miss Warden? Yes, sir. Want to have brought in for questioning? I think not. You know, Sergeant, when Simon Templer is even remotely connected with a case of mine, it means one thing. Trouble. Hmm. I think I'll let you drive me down to Miss Quest's flat. Mr. Templer might appreciate my saying good night to him. The point is, how could Flane have been sure I'd go? I could have ignored the note and called you for this instead. All Anne's mind wouldn't work that way. Why not? Well, he'd figure that for a thousand pounds a week, you'd jump through hoops if Byron told you to. Hmm. It's half past one. I'll go. Bloodhound of the yard. Uh, Temper. Claude. Or oh, April may introduce an old friend of mine. Inspector Claude Eustace Steele of Scotland Yard. April Quest. Uh, Hello. Hello. Isn't it a little past your bedtime? I wouldn't have slept without knowing what you did this evening. Why, has uh, somebody blown up the Bank of England? Where were you tonight? I had dinner at the Shadow Mama with Miss Quest. Mr. Templer has been with you all evening? Men are usually with me all evening. He brought you home? They usually do that, too. And you've been here ever since, correct? Why all the questions? Just interested. I'm deeply touched. I'm sure I am. Oh, well, I'll see you around. Inspector, would you like a drink or anything? Uh-uh. No, thanks. Good night, Stimper. Good night, Lord. Sleep well. I will. Now. I was pretty good, wasn't I? Oh, you were great. You know, for a round man, Claude has a very long nose. Now, what were we talking about? April Quist. <laughs> what a ridiculous name. Do you believe her, sir? Sergeant, I never believe anything about Simon Templer until I've proved it three times. And even then, I'm always willing to change my mind. Before we call it tonight, I think we'll just drop by the shadow moment. Right, sir. Good night, sir, madam. Good night. Uh, sorry, sir, we're closed. I'm from Scotland Yard. Is the manager here? No, sir, he's gone home. Everybody has. Were you here all evening? Yes, sir. Did Simon Templer have dinner here tonight? Yes, sir, he did. Who will? Miss Quest. Uh, when do they leave? 10.32, sir. You're very precise. Well, that's because of the note. Note? What note? A note came from Mr. Templer, and I, well, I looked at the clock. What was in it, you know? Well, sir, I did glance at it. And? It was from Byron Ufer, it's the producer. Oh? What did it say? It said that Mr. Templer was to go to Mr. Ufer, it's his house right away. It said urgent. Oh. Tomorrow, Mr. Templer is going to have a lot of explaining to do. Son. How are you feeling? Oh, all right, I didn't sleep too well. Sit down. Teal, give you a rough time? No, actually, it was quite nice. I said what you told me to. I didn't involve you, and I didn't say I'd been back to Byron's office. Good girl. Oh, Simon, I don't like it. Once you start lying to the police, anything can happen. Suppose Inspector Teal asked me where I... Peggy, relax. All right. Oh, by the way, Dave Brown rang. Oh, the lawyer. Yes, he wants everybody who is under personal contract to Byron to be at the office at three o'clock this afternoon. All the suspects under one roof. Except one. The police are holding Jack Groom. Oh, he didn't do it, Simon. He couldn't have. And you're quite sure that this was the man you drove to Mr. Ufflet's house last night? Yeah, I'm positive. Can you remember what time? Yeah, it was about, uh, about five to nine. And he asked you to wait? Yeah, that's right. And I did. How long? Oh, about 20 minutes. 
And then? Well, uh, this gentleman came out with the other fella, the, the one that's in the morgue, you know. Uvalitz. Yeah, that's right. They was arguing and shouting. And then the other gentleman told Mr. Groom here that he could go to blazes and that he had to do as he was told. Did you see both men clearly? Oh, yeah. Then what? Well, uh, Mr. Groom here asked me to take him to Albert Court in Kensington. All right, Black, thank you. You can go now. Where you are, Gunner? Thank you, driver, very much. Oh, you're welcome. Any time. Mr. Groom, I'm sorry you were inconvenienced. So you're satisfied now that my alibi will stand up? Yes. You're free to go now. Thank you. If you just leave it to the police. First Byron was murdered with the considered intention of having me accused of it. But you haven't been accused of it. Not yet. Well, congratulations, Templar. Yes, we knew you could do it. Oh, big please. A masterful way of getting rid of a producer. You two are next on the list. <laughs> Peggy, don't look so disapproving. Such bad taste. Maybe, but Byron of was a first-class stinker. Don't expect any tears from me. Come, friend. Oh, they're impossible. But truthful. I get a little tired of their slapstick humor all the time. We're ready, Mr. Templar. Would you come too, please, Miss Warden, in case I have some notes? Thank you. I won't comment on the personal aspects of this tragedy. You're all anxious to know how Byron's death will affect you. I can tell you very quickly. Your contracts with Byron were all personal ones. Normally, therefore, they would refer to his heirs. Who's inherited April? That's what I'd like to know. Mr. Lazarov, could we dispense with the humor? Sorry? Mr. Ufelitz has no heirs. So, legally, you are all free agents, subject to confirmation when Byron's will is probated. Your salaries will be paid up to and including yesterday on which date the estate holds that all obligations were mutually terminated. The only difficulty arises with Mr. Templer. Who is neither here nor there. Uh, you and Byron hadn't actually signed a contract, so as his executor, I'm offering you a thousand pounds, a week's salary and full settlement. Is that satisfactory? It seems fair enough. Uh, very well. It may be a week before I can get your checks out, but I'll take care of it as soon as I can. I think that's all. Unless there are any questions. I have a question. Yes, Mr. Templer? Who knows anything about Troby Andrews? You need Troby's name out of this! She's suffered enough! You know, Sergeant, it's just possible that I may now fulfill a lifetime ambition. You mean arresting Templer? I'm pleased to be optimistic. I hope you're right. Sergeant, I hope so too. Oh, you'll have some sort of explanation. But with Groom no longer a suspect, it'll have to be good. Very good. I don't get it. Why won't anybody talk about Trilby Andrews? I don't know. Well, she's the key to the whole mystery. In what way? Well, then I'm not sure, but there's a connection. Why was a photograph on Byron's desk when he was murdered? And why did Jack Groom storm out of the room at the mere mention of her name? Oh, Claude Eustace, how are you? I can honestly say that I've never felt better in my life. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Any particular reason? The distinct possibility of your being convicted for the murder of Byron Ophelitz. <laughs> well, either you're joking or you flipped your wig. You had a note from Ophelitz last night? I did. Yes, you did. It was delivered to the Chateau Marmont restaurant at 10.32. Told you to go to his house at once. My, my, Claude, you have been busy, haven't you? At 10.40, Ophelitz put through a call to the police. Told them that somebody was prowling around the grounds. The police came... Claude, did you say Ufelitz called? Yes. Did you take the call yourself? Of course not. Then you can't be sure it was Ufelitz. Could have been someone saying they were Ufelitz. Don't confuse the issue. You went to the house. Yes, Claude, I did. Then why didn't you admit it? Inspector, Mr. Templer Here's has nothing to do... Come to my house at once. Urgent Byron. So naturally I went. When did you write this? I knew you'd ask that. I arrived at Ufelitz's house and he was dead. And the police came. I knew I was being framed. It's true. Now, how do you know? She believes in me. Well, I don't. Naturally. 
If you've nothing to hide, why lie? Why say that you were with April Quest all the evening? Well, you wouldn't have believed me any more last night than you do now. Besides, I needed time to think. And have you? Why don't you go and talk to Alan Flynn? He threatened Ufalitz in this office yesterday. He hates me because he felt I was taking a lucrative job away from him. He's tough enough to have killed Ufalitz, and is vicious enough to try and frame me for it. Well, oh. arrest me and the killer will get away. Simon, don't you think that... Claude, give me 24 hours, and I'll hand you the murderer on a plate. You can have until midnight. Simon, I wish you'd let me tell him. Peggy, when I need you to clear me, I'll ask. Well, now trust me, will you? I haven't much choice. <laughs> Don't sound so desperate about it. Where are you going? To talk to Jack Groom. I'll pick you up to your flat at seven for dinner, okay? Jack, I'd like to talk to you. We have nothing to talk about. Oh, I think we have. Well, I'm afraid you're wrong. Can we go someplace private and talk? Why? You want to talk about Truby, isn't that right? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, Jack, I just came within inches of being arrested. You were held over my Hello. Hello. Since neither of us had anything to do with Byron's murder, don't you think we could cooperate? Look, Templar, I'm not interested. I'm in the clear. I couldn't care less what happens to you. Jack? What are you running away from? Nothing. You are? Is it Troby Andrews? Yes. Who is she? She isn't. Not anymore. She's dead. Oh. She had everything, you know. Beauty, talent, the lot. And you were in love with her? We were going to be married. What happened? I introduced her to Byron. And then? Well, the usual thing happened. Beautiful beginner meets famous producer. He promised her all sorts of things, and before I knew it... He took her away from you. I was so jealous. We had a row. She refused to see me, even to talk to me. And then one night she... She took four dozen sleeping tablets. What for? Who knows? Loneliness, desperation, defeat, the usual reasons, I guess. I wasn't there to find out. I just handed her over to Ufalitz and let him destroy her. Did you... Ever talk to him about her? Oh, yes. Last night. And? He called her a dumb little broad. Then he laughed. He thought it was a big joke. And now he's dead. <laughs> yes. The joke backfired, didn't it? I'm in the mood for a big drink. I am in the mood to join you. <laughs> Oops. You must have smelt the liquor. Movie day? Yeah, the uncrowned kings of the film world are back on the throne again. <laughs> Meaning? Meaning Jack Groom is taking us with him to Liberty Production. We're writing yesterday and tomorrow for him. <laughs> is that definite? Yes, everything except the contract which will be signed tomorrow. If we can still hold a pen. <laughs> I know you two boys are a great comedy team. But trying to hang Ufalitz's murder on me was a bit way out. You two wrote that note, didn't you? Then you called the police. You said something about a prowler with the intention that I should be caught in the house with his body. No, oh, that's not true. We better tell him, Vic. Double, it all started out to be a gag. Well, I'm ready to laugh. Oh, because of the script we were writing for you. The heavies tried to get you arrested. So we wrote the note. And then called the cops. I'm not laughing. We thought if the star of the picture is arrested for prowling around the producer's house... <laughs> there'd have been some very good publicity. And the whole thing would have been cleared up right away. You boys are a riot. Uh, Templar, on my word of honor, we had no idea Orphanitz would be dead. It was just a horrible coincidence. We're always doing this sort of thing. Hey, like the time we sent that postcard to the Prime Minister yeah. from Spain. <laughs> yeah, saying, darling, I still love you, Bueller. <laughs> we had a mental picture of the PM trying to explain it to the wife. <laughs> and just how far would this uh, joke of ours have gone? But Templar, we wouldn't let anything happen to you, honestly. But we, we, we didn't say anything when the whole thing went sour because... It, uh... We were ashamed. Oh. There's no real harm done, is there? No. Well, gentlemen, never let it be said that Simon Templar doesn't have a sense of humor. He hasn't, you know.
Rofelitz had just offered Templar a thousand pounds a week. Why should he want to kill that sort of meal ticket? Oh, it doesn't make sense. No. Make the deal. Thanks. They've located all in flame. The Chateau Marmont restaurant. Good evening, Mr. Templer. Good evening, George. What do you have? Uh, scotch and soda, please. Make it two. Hmm? Yes, sir. See oil and plain over there. Mm. Excuse me, ma'am. Simon, don't fight with him, please. No intention of fighting with anyone. Mind if I talk? Well, the famous Simon Templer. Flynn, I'd like to... He's going to be a great star, huh? Name up in lights? Not anymore, I guess. Serves you right. Took the part away from him. Since the picture's not being made anywhere, I hardly see that it matters. You bet it matters. That was a dirty trick. Play, and I think we'd better get one or two things straight. You were out long before a buyer and discussed any deal with me, and you know it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Look, uh, look, I want to apologize for last night. I didn't mean to insult poor April. It's okay. No hard feelings? None. Shake. You're all right. Thanks. Now, would you like to tell me what you know about Trilby Andrews? Trilby? It's a cute kid. Nice, too. Kind of unspoiled. Really beautiful. I met her on location when I was doing the outback. I took her out a few times in London. Flayne, I want to ask you a few questions. Ah, oh, Claude, I'm glad you came along. There's been a few developments. I'm talking to Mr. Flayne, not you. All and this is Inspector Teal. And I'll introduce myself, thank you. Teal, Scotland Yard, what is this? I want to ask you a few questions about the murder of Byron Ufflitz. Bowen. Claude, if you would just listen. Will you mind your own business? Yes. I'm Inspector Teal of Scotland Yard. Where can I talk to this man privately? Well, the manager's office. Through there. Go on. Now, wait a minute. Go on. <laughs> and you keep out of this, Deputy. What's going on? Our friend Claude Eustace is about to make another one of his famous mistakes. You threatened Ufflitz? Yes, but I didn't kill him. And you hate Templar badly enough to try to frame him for murder? That's not true. Didn't Ufflitz fire you yes, but I... and hire Templar instead? Yes, but and I... didn't Templar hit you last night? Yes, but I deserved it. But you were burning inside, weren't you? So you killed Ufflitz, sent that note to Templar so that he'd take the blame. What is this? Are you and Templar trying to frame me? Mr. Flayne, I'll have to take you down to headquarters. Oh, no, you don't! I'll see you at your place. Didn't kill Ufalitz. Then what's he running away from? Ufflitz murder case. Congratulations, Claude. You've done it again. So the police are satisfied all in flame killed Ufflitz? Yes. Well, I'm glad that's over. But it's not all over, is it, Peggy? You killed him. The motive, Troby Andrews. Andrews and Warden. 
They're almost an anagram, and I nearly missed it. Then there was the photograph on Byron's desk. I thought the face was familiar and it had to be someone. Then I realized it was like someone. Like you. Who was it, Peggy? My sister. How did you find out? The likeness in the photograph. Then I remembered that Flaina told me he had met Trilby while he was making the outback in Australia. You said you came from Australia. Do you want to tell me the rest of it? Trilby was my younger sister. She was very beautiful. She met Orland Flain when he was filming in Australia and got bitten by the movie bug. She decided to come to London. She saved her money and eventually came. She wrote to me regularly. And then her letters stopped. She was dead. I couldn't believe it. I, I flew over from Australia determined to find out what happened. I eventually got a job in Byron's office. And then I found out he was responsible. For what? She was expecting a child. His child. I'm sorry. And last night? I left. Then I went back. I pretended I liked him. I poured him some drinks. He said I reminded him of someone. I asked him if it was the girl in the photograph. I got him talking about her. He admitted everything and then he laughed. I saw the gun in the drawer of the desk. And I did it. And now what? I don't know. Peggy, the police think they have their murderer. Orlando Flayne. And he's dead, so the case is closed. Or is it? Inspector Teal, please. 